Still looks very much like a man. Oh, babe, I think you have the wrong profile. There's no men that live here. Not one in sight. Maybe you're my role model. No, 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 no. you're my role model. No, 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 no. You inspired me to start making content. And okay. so accept that. Yes, Okay. I accept it. This is Jeffrey Marsh. Will you accept that you're an inspiration? And I love you very much. Fine, thank you. I, I love okay. you very much. And I wanted to know, as a non-binary human, do you have any relationship to the concept of girlhood? I absolutely do. I find girlhood to be inspiring. There are a lot of human beings who are girls who transcend what their gender is supposed to be. Yes. And that to me is something I draw strength from. Hello everyone, if you are a new viewer, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if this is your second, third, fourth, fifth time watching one of my videos and you have not yet subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I mean, you've watched so many of my videos, so it must mean you like me at least a little bit. So just wipe me up and make it official and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I'm hoping to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. So all of you guys who subscribe to my channel, you're going to be helping me achieve my goal. So thank you in advance, but let's get into this video. Time to talk about everyone's favorite lady, Dylan Mulvaney. That rhymed. That rhymed. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but I'm a genius, so what can I say? I just told you who I thought I was. A god! So this clip is from the Today Show, and during the interview, among many other things, Dylan Mulvaney told these women what he believes the definition of a woman is, and these women sat there and enabled the foolishness. I just think how special that the universe waited to introduce me to the world until I was a woman. And I just have to thank you because I think one of my biggest fears has been being accepted by other women and being invited into womanhood. Mm. Um, so to be sitting with three gorgeous ladies oh. feels really special. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. I feel sad that you have not felt welcome like that. I'm glad that you could be part of this discussion. Yes. What I've realized was like, womanhood is not about what we wear or, or or you know the makeup that we put on it's but it can help sometimes mm -hmm. and i know that when i am in an outfit that makes me feel really good that that gets me a little bit step closer so dylan doesn't really give a definition for the word woman and i think the reason is because dylan knows that if he gives a definition for the word woman it would exclude him because we all know that a woman is an adult human female so Dylan goes on to talk about hair and makeup and clothing and how those things are a part of womanhood. And no, those things do not define womanhood. Those things do not make a woman a woman. And I think that this lady said it best. This message is for Dylan. You know, that guy that wears skirts and lipstick and hands out free tampons. Um, I have a message for you. I hear you want to be me. Um, and I respect that. I would too if I were you. I would definitely want to be me and my sisters. Just a couple of really quick things. Um, first, my sisters don't need your tampons. We've been doing this a hell of a lot longer than you've been alive, sweetheart. And I'm pretty sure you don't know anything about heaviness of flow. Um, maybe your uterus cramps up. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, wait, no, you don't have one. So anyway, um, being how cute you are, and you really are, sweet pea. You're, you're adorable. And I can, I can respect you for wanting to be like myself and one of my sisters. Here's the thing. You want to be like us? Play like us. This is what women do, sweet pea. I am one of three women working on an active construction site. Want to take a walk with me? Want to see what this is about, sweet darling? I get cut. I get dirty. I stink. I make good money. Not money like you, though, sweetheart. You got me. You got me there. You got, you got probably me and every single person I work with on that one. But I can guarantee you, pumpkin... You as a man, and let's face facts, you are a man, couldn't do what I do. This isn't just about wearing a f***ing skirt. M makeup? Makeup. I don't know, honey. I don't even have my bridge in because I'm at work. But I will go for you on the weekends when I can become a female, not a woman, a female. That's when I get to become a female. Today, I am a woman. I am fighting for my family. I'm fighting for... Every female. You think this job's easy, buddy? You think this is easy? You think it's easy being a woman? It isn't. You are not a fucking woman. I am a woman. And all my sisters that are out there grinding, looking just like me, without having 
fake tits, fake ass, fake nails, fake everything. That's what a woman is. Wearing hair extensions, heels, ponytails, makeup, other stereotypes about femininity. Those things do not make you a woman. Wearing those things just makes you a man in heels and hair extension and makeup and a man in feminine things. And if that is how you want to style yourself, then do you, boo. It's your prerogative, but that does not make you a woman. It is offensive to insinuate that those are the things that make a woman a woman. So if a woman chooses not to wear heels, not to wear makeup, not to carry herself in a feminine manner, that means she's not a woman. But Dylan Mulvaney is not the only person to give a ridiculous answer to the question of what is a woman. A while back, this clip went viral of Matt Walsh going back and forth with a man who says he's a woman. You've asserted that no one would ever see me as a woman, that nobody would ever see or could see a transgender person as a woman, and yet I have dozens of friends from diverse backgrounds, women from the reservation, a woman from Japan, uh, several immigrant women, I have my coworkers, I have my boss, my VP, my CEO, all respecting me as a woman. But what he fails to realize is that the people at his work are most likely validating him because they're not stupid. <laughs> they know that if they don't validate him, they could lose their jobs and there could be lawsuits that come from it. Because only in 2023 can a man in a headband Bruh. tell you he's a woman and you can lose your job for it if you disagree. This is literally what the book 1984 was warning us about. A dystopian world where you are not allowed to acknowledge things that are verifiably true and where language has been changed to suit a political agenda. And the people who are enabling this shit do not see the slippery slope that we are sliding down. But I digress. Matt Walsh asked the man how he came to realize that he's a woman and his response was laughable. You're, you're saying that you discovered that you're a woman. I'm asking you how you did. That's a very fair question. Okay, okay. How do you know that you're a woman? That's fine. All right. So first of all, listening to transgender people. And it was like, okay, this is a one-off, you know, one person describing these things. Um, things like looking at yourself in the mirror and not recognizing yourself. Uh, hearing compliments. Like, you are such an example, like a positive masculine role model. And just hearing that and being like, you know, it feels like they're talking about somebody else. Um, it means feeling alone, even when you're surrounded by guys, even when you have a lot of friends, and I was active in like Boy Scouts, I'm an Eagle Scout. Uh, I had great masculine role models my whole life, and yet I never felt like I belonged. I felt welcome. And well, why, why does that make you a woman? Uh, because As opposed I, to just a, a man who doesn't get along with some other men, or a man who's, who's, who's depressed, or a man who doesn't feel at home totally in his body, which by the way is a, is a pretty universal human experience, everybody goes through it at one time or another. So, so in what way does that make you a woman, though? And you, it, it's interesting, you're, you're telling me that you listen to the experiences of other transgender people. Well, yeah. But what about women? You pick any, any actual woman in this room. In, in what way do you know that you belong in the same category as them? Uh, I know because they tell me. So here is the... You need them to tell you what you are? Women. Yes. I trust the opinions of the women around me. It's women, incredible. You might try it sometime. If most women voted and said they don't see you as a woman, would you say I'm not a woman anymore? If who? If most women voted and said they don't see you as a woman anymore, would you then relent and say, I'm not a woman? I would say most people on the planet have no idea who I am. I'm going to trust the opinions of the people who've spent their lives with me. So once again, he is pointing to external validation. All you people in this man's life who are validating him and telling him he's a woman, y'all are wrong for that. You're the reason this species is a failure and it makes me angry. Listen, there is nothing wrong with being an effeminate gay man. Now, obviously, he did not say that he's gay. He said he's a mother, but he didn't say he's gay. But I strongly suspect that he's gay. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you are a effeminate man and you want to wear headbands, wear all of the headbands that you want. But your headband does not make you a woman. And I have to say that I find the phrase I identify as particularly annoying because it's basically a qualifier that you use because you know that you are not that thing and you know that you are not going to be perceived to be that thing. So you have to say that you identify as that thing. 
Take for example, me. I am a black woman. If I were to say that I identify as a black woman, you would say, okay, so is she really a woman or is she really black? You would question it because that qualifier would be me acknowledging that one of those things are not true. And let me give another example. Let's say I went to an accountant to file my taxes and I walk into the office and the person who I'm going to hire as my accountant, they say, hi, I identify as an accountant. I'm going to be like, so are you an accountant or nah? <laughs> you know, I want someone who is an accountant to file my taxes, not someone who identifies as an accountant. Because these days when you say you identify as something, it's because you know you're not that thing, but you want to be perceived as that thing. So I just think it's so funny when people say, I identify as. I find that phrase so triggering. If you are that thing, just say you are that thing. I am a white person, not I identify as a white person. I am a woman, not I identify as a woman. If you say, I identify as a woman, it's because you know you're not a woman. And this gentleman is saying, I identify as a woman because he knows he is not going to be perceived as a woman or even a trans woman because he is just a man in a fucking headband. And so here's the point of the video where I'm going to talk about something else that has been living in my head rent free for the last couple of weeks. So I did a video about uh, a joke that Dave Chappelle made about the LGBTQ community. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out after this. I'm going to link to it in the end cards. But, you know, I do go and I read the comment section every now and then to see what you guys are saying. And there was a comment that was left by one of my subscribers. And I want to talk about the comment because I thought the comment brought up an interesting debate about words and definitions, language and societal perceptions. The comment that was left on my video was in response to my statement that a woman is an adult human female. And this is the comment that the subscriber left. As a transsexual, the word woman is adult human female or anyone that is socially perceived as a woman. Passing matters. Blair White and myself do not get treated as men in society. If I go to get my car fixed, I am not going to get the price a man would get. When I get catcalled by construction workers, they aren't thinking, damn, he's hot. There needs to be nuance in the trans discussion. And I wish the trans community, which keeps expanding, would separate facts and the social aspect. I am a woman in the social sense because others automatically perceive me as female. And so that was the comment. And I did respond back to it because I thought it was a really interesting comment. And I tried to give my response as respectfully and honestly as I could because I did appreciate their comment and their perspective, but I did not entirely agree with it. And so this is what I wrote. Thank you for your comment, and you make a valid point. Socially, people may view you and treat you as they would any other woman. But should society define things based on perception, especially if not everyone perceives some things the same way at all times? For example, a trans woman may pass very well when walking in the mall, but that same trans woman wouldn't still be perceived as a woman if they were standing naked in a room and never had bottom surgery. At that point, it would be obvious that that person is not a woman, but is a trans woman. I don't agree that perception should mean we change definitions, but I also understand that if people are referring to you as a woman, as you go about your daily life, no one should expect you to correct them and say, no, by the way, I'm transsexual, because I'm sure that would be uncomfortable for you. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I have no malicious intent. Changing the definition of words just because some people are trying to emulate that thing, I disagree with. Like, take for example, let's say tomorrow 10,000 people decide that they want to identify as cats, they want to live their life as cats, and they want to shit in litter boxes. And they also want to change their pronouns to cat self. Does that mean that we therefore should change the definition of a cat to include those people who are choosing to shit in litter boxes and identify as cats. No, that's ridiculous. And I think it's ridiculous that as a society, 
We are expected to validate everyone's existence. We have to validate obese people because if we don't validate obese people, you're being fatphobic. You have to validate trans people because if you don't validate trans people, you're being transphobic. We have to have everything rainbow. Rainbows everywhere. Shit rainbows. Rainbows on cups. Rainbows on 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 carpets. Rainbows in your windows. To the window, to the wall. Everything rainbows. <laughs> and if you don't do that, if you don't validate the alphabet mafia, then you are some kind of bigot. Everyone has to be validated. No, stop that shit. Stop. Like, this is crazy. This is textbook narcissism. The patients have taken over the asylum and everything has gone to shit. Like, it's even gotten to the point where people who are child predators also want to be validated and they want to have their attraction for people who are under the age validated and they want to be recognized as minor attracted persons. This is where we are as a society. Oh my God. I want to move to Mars. I want to move to Mars. Yeah, I, I just don't enjoy it. It's not an enjoyable experience for me, and I don't like any of you. I know I'm getting a little bit off topic, but I just want to emphasize that as a society, I think it is important that we stop validating and making way for ideologies that as a society, we all disagree with, at least the majority of us. Today, we're fighting over words like man and woman, and then tomorrow, we fight over words like freedom and morals. And you might think that I'm, you know, I'm being overdramatic and I'm exaggerating. But actually, a few months ago, the Prime Minister of Canada, the country that I live in, oh my God, Justin Trudeau went viral on Canadian social media because he said that the word freedom is a right-wing word. Yeah, he said that. I think people really underestimate how important language is. And to demonstrate my point even further, I want to show you guys a clip from a speech that was done by Yon Mi Park. And she had this one statement that I think is so powerful and I wanna add it here so you guys can see. I did not even know I was oppressed because dictator took that word out of our dictionary. Like, you know, George Orwell talks about 1984, the importance of controlling the language. It's happening right now. They keep saying what you can say, what you cannot say. In North Korea, there's no word for depression because how can you be depressed in a socialist paradise? There's for simply, you don't even know the concept. So how do you fight to be free if you don't know you're a slave? So they don't tell us the slavery that we are in. And I think that's what like is so bleak with North Koreans because a lot of them don't even know that they are enslaved by dictator. And a lot of them think that Kims are gods, even till this day. So yeah, that's all I have for this video. I feel like I started over here and I ended way over there, but it's all connected, I think. <laughs> if you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like button because it helps me in the algorithm. If you would like to support my channel by hitting the subscribe button, please don't forget to do that. And if you would like to support my channel monetarily, I have also started a Patreon because a lot of times when I talk about spicy topics like this, <laughs> they get demonetized. So if you want to support my channel, you can check out my Patreon. And lastly, if you want to support my channel, you can leave a comment in the comment section because that also helps me in the algorithm. So I would like to hear from you guys. What do you think about this topic? And what do you think about the, the changing of language? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you would like to see more content just like this, I have two more videos for you in the end cards. I will see you in the next one. Bye.